All right, so what is domain-driven design? You may or may not have heard about it, but in general, it is um, a concept of business-driven design. That's another term that you can use. Uh, it's also what I consider a no-tech design. And also, you can also think about it, what's the secret sauce of any business that you're in or that your company is in or that you're that you are yourself as a company owner maybe is in and um, what is that secret sauce how does the money flow through the company so with domain driven design is really a style to let you model the business so you and everybody involved in a particular project speaks the same language as the business would do and so the formal definition if i read this here from wikipedia is Domain-driven design is an approach to software development for complex needs by connecting the implementation to an evolving model. And that is the key, the evolving model. In my opinion, the model itself is not necessarily a, um, a technical model that, that you may use to with architectural designs or diagrams. It's really the model that you're trying to explain everybody involved and what the secret sauce what the business is doing and so in a nutshell you are modeling the business and modeling a business can be done as an example just by purely writing down sentences and explaining what the middle what the what the what the business is doing writing down english sentences is just as good as if you use architectural diagrams um you can also think of it as a different perspective from different points of views, maybe under different scenarios. And this entire concept of domain-driven design, what is that domain? And that is the key that you're trying to understand. If you're coming in as an outsider into uh, maybe in a corporation or an environment where you have no clue, you have never worked into that env in that environment, what you probably first will be doing is understand what the business is all about. If you don't know what the business is all about, how can you model or come up with solutions to particular problems? So in my opinion, it is extremely important. Don't start out with the technical side or how we can implement certain constraints or databases, all those other things. Don't start with the back end. Start with the customer first. What is the customer's need, ideally? And if you can talk to customers, that's even better. In my opinion, it's good to also talk to the business side and model the business, but it's also extremely important if you have a, a problem that uh, requires or, or an opportunity in the business that requires to talk to customers and get that feedback. Uh, I think that that'll be vital if you if you have that opportunity, take advantage of it. If not, stay within the business organization. Maybe they have customer departments, a sales department. Uh, product department that is very close to the customers so if you don't have an opportunity to talk to the customers directly at least communicate with the stakeholders with the product department uh, or whatever the the need might be or who has that expert knowledge who are the experts in that business who can you talk to you directly and the key is talking communicating i'm not talking about via emails emails would be the, probably the last option you want to go for but ideally, you do face-to-face -face communication with those domain experts. What are they doing on a day-to-day -day basis? What are the issues that they're facing? So domain-driven design is a way to capture that knowledge that's in people's head and may not be in any documentation. And so as an example here, I have, uh, let's take a typical sales department in a larger organization. In the sales department, in this case, you have two people communicating about the same concept, in this case, the customer. So within that domain, within that organization, within that section of the organization, that communication seems to be fine. Both understand the meaning of what a customer really means within the sales department alone. So the reason why they understand this is because they're speaking the same language, the ubiquitous language, and that means they are they can interpret the the meaning of the term customer within that bounded context and what that means i'll go into that a little bit later so we have two people communicating in the same language about the same concept in this case customer so if you take that a step a little further 
you have now sales department and a shipping department because they are two separate entities within the organization so the meaning of a customer can be interpreted differently from uh, one organization to another within one department to another even though it's in the same company but the interpretation is something a little bit differently depending who you ask in that organization and so you have this barrier in between right there right this section here um, and we come to that a little bit later how that barrier can be overcome so that both can still interpret it the way they need to work with a customer concept. So you don't you don't want to try to mix and match them together or fuse them together. Because there's a reason why they're different departments. They're specialized in a certain part of the organization. And so what you're challenging is what your challenges are is the interpretation of what that customer really means. So domain driven design is a concept to capture that meaning within those contexts and then find a solution to to make that work so if i show this a little bit differently so we have the sales context in one side and then we have the shipping context on the other side both have customers but the customer in the sales context here might have a lot of attributes that may not even need it on the shipping context area of it or vice versa, the shipping context might have certain attributes that make, really makes no sense for the sales context. But they're both talking about the same customer. It's the same organization. And um, there's probably ways on how to identify a customer. Identification is one, one of those aspects that you need to uh, consider. How do you uh, translate from one customer context to another customer context? And um, there are things like you don't want certain information to leak from one context to another if it's not required. Or there might be dependencies from one context to another. There's some more details regarding this, but, but for now, just keep that in mind that you, you want to stay within the bounded context, within the area of expertise, within that context. That makes sense to those people that you ask. And so this is not really technical. This is really just an understanding to speak the same language that each context, or to speak the same language within the same context. That would be a better description. Um, so really, domain-driven design is really to understand the business domain with that secret sauce. And so if you think about a, a company, what, uh, what makes that company tick? What is the, the secret sauce? How do you generate revenue? Uh, how do you maintain high revenue income? And so there are certain sections usually within an organization or within your own company maybe that are very generic, that are not really uh, a secret sauce, so to speak. It's that expert knowledge, that expertise that somebody or some group of people have that makes that company to be successful. And so you want to concentrate on that core domain. What is that core the secret sauce for that company. So domain-driven design is not necessarily to apply to everything that you want to find a solution for. Ideally, because it does take time to understand, it takes time and money to, to, to come up with a domain-driven solution. So you want to concentrate on, on uh, the biggest bang for the buck. What is that core domain of that business? And so domain-driven design is a tool that you can use to get down to that, that uh, secret sauce. So this is just a really a big highlight. What I would really hi highly recommend is uh, some references that you should take a look at. Uh, what I have is, first thing I should recommend is the Domain Driven Design Reference by Eric Evans. It's, um, it's about 70, 75, a little less than 70 pages. It's a great read, it's a great start if, you've, if you're new to Domain Driven Design. Uh, highly recommend this. Um, and if you don't have enough time either, the, the reference is, is fantastic. I would I would recommend start with that first. And then what they call the, the Blue Bible really is Eric Evans' uh, Domain Driven Design. It's a little bit thicker, as you can see, but it's this is how a lot of things started in the Domain Driven Design. He was the one, Eric Evans was the one that uh, really started it all. It put, put it down in something that people can understand. 
highly recommend. Use this as a second book to read up on. If you're familiar with, with Domain Driven Design, it's always great to come back to it and just to refresh. Um, the next thing I recommend is the Domain Driven Design or the stilled version of Domain Driven Design by Von Vernon. Uh, it's also a first good starter, depending how much time you have. It's a very high level overview, but from Von Vernon's point of view, and I really like this as well, use this as a, as a third book to, to get going. And then the third book is um, Domain Driven Design by Van Vernon, the implementation of it, Implementing Domain Driven Design. This is a great, great book. Uh, this is not just a theory, but also how do you actually implement it technically. So he shows you in a lot of code examples on how you can implement Domain Driven Design. I have my own experiences I've been through over the years, and we'll dive into that a little bit deeper later. And also any additional classes that I have uh, upcoming, I want to highlight those real quick uh, on creatingsoftware.com. Uh, the first one that I have is Architecting and Designing Domain Driven Design or Event Based Microservices. Domain Driven Design is included in that class, highly recommended. Then also Implementing a uh, Serverless Microservice in AWS. Here we're actually getting the hands dirty, writing code and implementing what we learned in the architecture and design and strategic design parts of it and actually how to implement and using and utilizing a lot of AWS services that are available to you. Um, really, really exciting. Looking forward to showing you this, this course. And then also uh, how to build an event store. As we dive deeper into domain-driven design and some of the contexts like uh, uh, CQRS and event sourcing, um, these are the tools that will help you to capture the domain knowledge and domain context and domain events is one of those things. And, uh, and an event story is a very critical piece that um, will help you in implementing a great solution. So with that, uh, this was the short overview of domain driven design. I hope this will help you a little bit. I highly recommend go through the books and then let's get started with the next lecture. See you then.